In this clip, I'm going to show what the sample app looks like and what the end goal environment is. I want to show a quick tour of the little service we're going to be building in this series. In a later clip, I'll talk more about the example domain model in some more detail, but for now, suffice to say it's a web app with these characteristics, which are pretty common for our working definition of microservices. Essentially, we're talking about an HTTP-based service, very small capability set, the smaller the better. No front end immediately, but likely it will end up with one. Backed by a database, so there's going to be some persistence. And for our particular example, I'll be showing a simple API key header-based protection scheme. What does the sample do? Well, it's a project catalog. It can list projects and add them, and that's as far as we'll go. I'll talk a little more about that domain later, as I said, but you semantic web fans will recognize this as something like description of a project, or DOAP. Now to demonstrate this, we'll do some direct API access and stand in awe of the raw nature and imagine the possibilities. So I'm going to flip to Postman running in Chrome. Now Postman is a useful HTTP client that runs nicely in this as an extension. And I can see if I get the root of the site, I get the hi mom content, which is there. We'll see that in a bit. If I do get on the projects resource, which is all of the projects, then I get a listing in a nicely formatted JSON payload. It's worth pointing out that there's a header token that I'm including with a magic value. And because of this, we're getting authenticated access to the endpoint. Now, retrieving data is nice, but we need to save data also. And so we actually support post. I've got the JSON payload is already pasted into the body of the request. And so when I send that as a post, as you can see, then I get back the answer. That was a 201 created and an echo of the payload that I sent in. So now I would expect if I do a get on projects, I should expect to see that cassowary item on the end of the list. And in fact, there it is. So next I'm going to cover just very quickly the other tools we'll be using and setting up to build this small service. The first is Lighttable. I have it open here on a closure source file in our project. It's a handy IDE. It's suitable for many languages, including Python, JavaScript, and others. And we'll see how to download it and set it up in a later segment. Besides an editor, we're also going to be using good old Terminal to be able to run a utility called Linegan, which we'll see later as well. We've already seen, for example, using Postman running as a plugin inside of Chrome. We'll see lots of that. Also appearing in a tab is Compose.io, and this is a hosted MongoDB service, and this is what we're using as our persistence engine. And not pictured here, but we'll talk about it some more later, is Heroku, which we will use for hosting the service once it's developed. Now, as you can see, it's not really heavy on the tooling side. You could think of it in old school terms as simply an editor, a compiler, and a terminal. And so what we've seen here is the finished product. It's a little service which uses JSON, has very simple API key token checker attached to it. And in other segments, I'll cover how to connect all the things together and create what I hope is an efficient development and deployment environment. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.